Hi everyone, and welcome to the 2021 4-H Youth in Action Virtual Celebration. 4-H is near and dear to my heart, and as a Tennessee 4-H alum, I'm just thrilled to be here with you to celebrate our four incredible 4-H Youth in Action pillow winners. Madeline, Elizabeth, Maida, and Aiden. These 4-Hers are resilient, compassionate, and innovative young leaders that are making the world a much better place. You're going to be blown away by their stories, as well as the impact that they've had on their communities. We also have some special surprise guests who will share inspiring messages for our pillow winners. So I'm telling you, be sure to stick around throughout the evening. We're going on a journey that will take us from Washington State to Indiana, to Oklahoma, to Illinois. Or is that Oklahoma? <laughs> I know that we've got people all over the country tuning in to celebrate these amazing 4-H's tonight. So shout out to all y'all. Please leave us a comment letting us know where you're tuning in from. And now, it is my pleasure to introduce the President and CEO of National 4-H Council, Jennifer Sarangelo. Thank you, Carla, and hello, everyone. We are so glad you've joined us for tonight's Youth in Action celebration, sponsored by our friends at Joanne. I'm so proud of our Youth in Action Award winners. They fill me with hope for a bright future. Tonight, I'd like to thank the sponsors of our Youth in Action Awards, the Allstate Foundation, Bayer, and HughesNet. We're grateful for your commitment to 4-H. As America's largest youth development organization, 4-H reaches nearly 6 million youth nationwide. For more than 100 years, Cooperative Extension has supported young people with 4-H positive youth development experiences. With your help, we've impacted millions of young people and we can't stop now. Kids are counting on us to connect them with 4-H opportunities to grow and thrive. Your gift unlocks their potential. Join us by donating to the Forward Fund. Go to 4-h.org or text the word CLOVER to 243725. We know you believe in America's kids. Thank you for supporting them with your generosity. Thank you, Jennifer. Now, it's the time we've all been waiting for, the 2021 4-H Youth in Action Celebration. After each 4-H story, we'll hear from a surprise guest who will help us to congratulate these pillar winners. You won't want to miss this. You can also congratulate these amazing young people by cheering them on in the comments. Our event begins with Elizabeth from Illinois 4-H, our Youth in Action pillar winner for Civic Engagement. Let's hear her story. I watched the Miss America pageant pretty much every year since I could understand what it was. I just love watching all the girls in the pretty dresses. I've been dancing since I was three. That's one of my biggest passions. I am definitely outgoing. I love adventure. I someday want to jump out of a plane. I like meeting new people and making new friends. My mom was like, okay, we gotta find a 4-H club, we gotta get these kids involved. One of the very first projects that I did was public speaking. I'd always been one to be outspoken, but I'd never really done any public speaking before. I mean, I was eight. I loved it. As soon as I tried it, I loved it. My 4-H leader, he quickly became family. My involvement in 4-H has really helped me throughout my journey. Neuroblastoma is a cancer of the central nervous system, and it's also called the Great Masquerader, which is why it took so long for them to find the cancer in me, and why I was already at stage 4. When my dad first told me that I had cancer, I just couldn't believe it. I was stunned. I only thought that cancer happened to, like, older folks. It didn't happen to kids. One of my very first questions was if I would be able to dance again. The next question was if I was going to die. 
My dad didn't really have any answers for me at the time, but now I know that I just have to keep fighting and I can't think about the fact that I may die someday because of my cancer or because of my treatment. I just have to keep going because I need to keep fighting for other kids who are going through the same thing. In 2017, I actually won Junior Miss Effingham County Fair Queen. That's whenever the Crowns Fight Cancer idea took full force. I had a crown, I could use that as a platform. Whenever you wear a crown, I feel it's a sparkly thing on your head. People pay more attention to you. That can also be your opportunity to share what you're passionate about. Crowns Fight Cancer is uh, just a girl changing the world one rhinestone at a time. What we do is the drive. I do the advocating. I go to the hospitals and I have done a few makeup sessions with my crown and sash and the dresses. We use all of that to make kids in the hospital happy. 4-H really helped me become a leader and that's what really helped me become the public speaker that I am and take action. I know that my 4-H family will last forever. I think that anybody at any age can do something to help. We need young people, we need the next generation of people to step up to the plate and find what they're passionate about and work towards making a change. I hope that's what they remember me by is that I tried everything I could to make things better for kids with cancer. Life is time sensitive. I am this adventurous person because of my cancer. I want to do everything that I can in the small amount of time that I may have. I want to spend as much time with my family and my friends as I can. I just want to be able to accomplish so much before time may run out. Elizabeth, wow, what an incredible story. As a 4-H alumna, I am just so proud of you and your beautiful spirit. Now you have persevered through the toughest times in your fight against cancer and found the strength to make a difference in so many lives. Now your story inspires me and fills me with hope, hope for a cure and hope for a bright future, especially with young leaders like you. 4-H is a great big family and we are here for you with love, care, and support. I hope you enjoy this special moment as we celebrate you, Elizabeth. Congratulations. Wow, Dolly. My fellow Tennessee 4-H alum, woo woo! Thank you for joining to congratulate Elizabeth. Elizabeth, I am so inspired by the battle you are fighting. You are an amazing young woman. And now, on to our Youth in Action Agriculture Pillar winner, Madeline from Indiana, 4-H. The most challenging thing about working with cows is that you never really know what's gonna happen. Even though you can build that trust relationship with them, at the end of the day, they have their own personality. I was nine years old when I first got my first cow. And I immediately fell in love with the disposition. They were super calm and honestly, talking to them was like talking to a friend. Between my third grade year and my sixth grade year, my herd was really at its performance peak. I was having a lot of success, I was selling. In 2013, an incurable disease came into my herd and there was nothing I could do about it. I had to make the decision to put down all of the cows. I essentially had to start all over. That experience left me absolutely devastated. I felt so alone, like I wasn't good enough. I already couldn't find that place that I fit in. And then for my safety, my cows, the things that I found comfort in to then be gone, I felt like I didn't have a voice. I was at a school where I was the only person with an agriculture background, so I didn't really have people at school that I could talk to. Nobody else really had cows that could understand anything that I felt. 4-H really taught me perseverance in that time. I learned that 
Trouble times, especially like that, is when you really have to persevere. No matter how badly you want to quit, no matter how hard it gets, you have to keep going. I began to reach out to kids at school who were sitting alone at lunch and were acting out in class. Um, and just to talk to them, spark that conversation. Like, hey, let's be friends. <laughs> uh, I feel like I don't fit in. Let's find a place together. And so I started this program where I would invite them over to my house and we would sit in my barn and I would teach them absolutely everything I knew about cows. I helped everyone from a six year old with Down syndrome to a senior in high school who was the quarterback of the football team. Looking back, I'm very fortunate that I was able to help a lot of kids. And the most rewarding thing to me was being able to watch their success. I joined 4-H at the very youngest age you could be in third grade, and I went through the program for 10 years, which is as long as you can do that in Indiana. And in my time, I did more than just cows. In fact, I took an average of 15 different things to be judged at the fair every year. I had cows, and I had pigs, and I had dress that I had sewn, and I had cooking, and I had photography, and that list just goes on. 4-H truly focuses on giving back to youth and teaching them how to make impacts in their community. Because of 4-H, I was able to find not only who I am, but what I want to do the rest of my life. I want to use my voice to help other people use their voice so that they can tell their story. going on Madeline this is Avery Williamson and I want to personally say congratulations uh, so proud of you and awesome what you're doing um, as a 4-H'er um, I'm truly inspired to uh, continue to do things through 4-H and I'm glad that you're doing the same and uh, just continue to uh, be a positive light for 4-H'ers uh, across the nation because uh, agriculture it runs the world you know a lot of people don't think that but it really does and uh, again just want to say congrats and uh, go for A's. Avery, I just love your surprising combination of talents. From the football field to agriculture, a different kind of a field. <laughs> we are so proud to call you Tennessee 4-H alum. Tennessee in the house. Thanks for your message and congrats to you, Madeline. Now, our next superstar is the Youth in Action PILA Award winner for STEM, Aiden from Oklahoma. My childhood was always filled with like a lot of different adventures because uh, I was a military kid. My dad is in the military. My mom is prior army. They really instilled a sense of you know purpose in their kids. And I think I was always looking for that adventure, looking for fun things to do. But I had a, a difficult time back in 2013 and 14 and 15. It was three years of a lot of uh, craziness happening. My sister, Ava Grace, has epilepsy and had severe epilepsy at that point. She had to like learn how to read and write again. And right as she was getting to this point where we were like, okay, she's, she's starting to get back to normal. Our house burned down in a fire and we ended up losing everything. Just a few months later, we ended up getting in a car accident, it left me in a back brace and, you know, severely injured my mom. And now she's in a wheelchair. The impact of, you know, all of those, uh, terrible events right off the bat was a lot of depression, a lot of stress. Everything that I knew, all of my, my stuff, baby pictures, pets, everything that, you know, was once me it was gone, was taken from me. It really made me lose myself. My friends, seeing that I was in like this depressive time, they invited me to the 4-H Robotics Club. I went to the first meeting and I, I just knew that that was a place where I wanted to be. I was glad to find 4-H because it, it gave me something that I could apply myself to. I connected with STEM because I learned that STEM is a really vast field and it has so many different opportunities for people to get involved. Working with your teammates, working with your hands to create something is really a lot of fun and it really builds a lot of character. 4-H is great and robotics programs in general are amazing, but sometimes people are left out. 
One thing that I noticed is that there weren't a lot of people that looked like me in the STEM area. I just started to realize that there was a bit of a lack of understanding that girls and minorities and you know, people who aren't associated with a school, homeschoolers, you know, people who live in rural areas can still get involved. So I started working on finding ways to get the word out, to market to these people, to have events that would help people realize that, you know, they also can see themselves in STEM. I helped create the first Lego League teams that my team, my group has uh, been mentoring. And I had to, you know, raise funds, had to create business plans. More diversity, more, more input, more ideas, just makes the world a better place. I am a completely different person now from the, the kid who was too afraid to get out of bed. You know, now I have a sense of purpose. I have something that I, I want to do. I don't think I will ever fully know the, the impact that 4-H has had on my life because it's just been so big and I'm forever grateful for that. Aiden, greetings, Bill and I here. It's great to see you again, or maybe it's great to be seen by you again. You did a great job last year on the STEM Challenge Mars trivia game, but understand this year, you've been awarded a Youth in Action Award, which is just fantastic. You have overcome some challenges, and you're getting young people excited about science, technology, engineering, and math, which are keys to our future. I am proud to know you. Once again, Congratulations. Thank you, Bill, and congratulations, Ada. I love your passion for making STEM accessible to all kids and adults, I gotta say for myself. And finally, our 4-H Youth in Action Pillow Winner for Healthy Living, Maida from Washington 4-H. When I was younger, I struggled a lot with anxiety and selective mutism. I was unable to talk to people I didn't know well. I mostly just spoke with my mom and a couple friends at school. I used to dance a lot and that really helped me to be able to express myself through movement so I didn't have to speak. I was just very nervous about speaking my truth and telling people my opinions on things so I would rather go along with what my friends said or just kind of go along with other people's plans. When I was in middle school, I only had a couple friends. We ended up starting to grow apart and I was bullied by them. I was very lonely and I felt very isolated. It was difficult to keep going when I didn't have that support system. My mom was a 4 her when she was younger, so when she saw me kind of losing my friends, she decided that she wanted to start a 4-H club for me to have the opportunity to participate in 4-H and connect with more of my peers. When I did my first public presentations, even just in front of our club, it was very nerve-wracking and stressful, but it was a great experience for me to challenge myself and grow in public speaking skills. I kept stretching my comfort zone. I felt a sense of accomplishment, realizing that I had done something I would never dreamed of doing. I noticed that LGBTQ plus youth didn't necessarily feel like they could be themselves. It reminded me of the loneliness and isolation that I felt when I was younger. My friends and I worked to help to create an environment where everyone could feel comfortable expressing their true selves. We started this by having conversations and presenting workshops for leaders and youth about the importance of supporting LGBTQ plus youth in 4-H. We created the Washington State 4-H Teen Equity and Inclusion Task Force, and we work to help 4-H be even more inclusive and equitable for all youth, but especially LGBTQ plus youth and youth of color. Currently, we have been working on revising policies such as making a more inclusive dress code and implementing the sharing of pronouns. 
It's been amazing to see youth feel comfortable to share who they truly are and not be afraid that they will be judged. I found a place of belonging in 4-H. I want youth to know that they will always be able to find a place in 4-H where they will be supported and accepted for exactly who they are. Maida, wow, I am just blown away by your courage, your tenacity to stand up for what you believe in and to be your true self. It's people like you, young people like you, who are the future leaders and 4-H creates those future leaders. Maida, I am so excited. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for changing lives. Thank you for allowing your life to be used for a greater purpose. And I just want to encourage you with this little song. Yes, you can. You can do anything if you try. Just try. Yes, you can. But you have to believe and rely on what you have inside. You can make it through your trials, though your trials will just make you strong. You can do anything. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. I believe in you. Congratulations. Congratulations, Maida. And Laz, it's always great to see you. Thank you for your beautiful message. What an incredible evening we've had, right? Hearing how these young leaders use their own resources, creativity, and skills to lift others up. Just wow. That's the heart of 4-H. I, for one, am thrilled to know that leaders like Madeline, Maida, Elizabeth, and Aiden are stepping up across the country to make the world a better place. Each of these winners is receiving a $5,000 scholarship to use towards their education and they will have the opportunity to reach people across the country with their stories. You have the opportunity to play a part in changing the world too. With a donation to the Forward Fund, you'll help other young leaders reach their full potential and make a difference in their communities and well beyond. Finally, I wanna offer one last congratulations to our 4-H Youth in Action winners. You've inspired us all, and we can't wait to see how you continue to shape the future as the next generation of leaders and visionaries. Thanks for tuning in, and good night. <laughs>